الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين أما بعد <coughs> الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa taala for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al Juma the Friday congregational prayer and to listen to the khutbah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een and upon his family members and companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us, to shower his hidayah, his guidance upon us to shower his forgiveness and to shower his acceptance upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our a'mal and deeds fi sabil Allah, inshallah. I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me. By giving me the permission and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah, inshallah, I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance, I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, and I seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ability once more to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah, insha'Allah. I remind you, my brothers and sisters, and I remind myself that we are insan, we are zaif, we are weak, we know nothing, we cannot do anything without the mercy, the guidance, and the permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. Last week, alhamdulillah, for those of us who are here, you will remember that we reminded ourselves from the Quranic and Sunnah perspective about the qalb, the heart, and the importance of the heart from a Quranic and Sunnah point of view. And how on the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would look at a sound heart and how important our heart is when it comes to connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
I don't want to get back into the topic, but those of us who are not here, of course, you have the CDs available at the Al Hikmat Dawa table, or you can look at it on YouTube or Al Hikmat TV. However, it is very important for us to understand because the heart is something that accumulates rust, says the Prophet. And it is the Quran, the remembrance of Allah, the dhikr, that purifies the heart. And last week we went down into doing things out of the dhikr and remembrance of Allah. And it should be done only for the sake of Allah. And that helps to purify our hearts. And when our hearts are pure and clean and connected to Allah, then our hearts direct the brain to command the different limbs in the body to perform and act properly. And hence we get good amal. But if our hearts are not pure, and our hearts are not connected to Allah with Iman, and we do not do things for the pleasure of Allah, then we will use our own brain analysis from our own selfishness and do things not for the pleasure of Allah, but for our own whims and fancies. Yeah. And then when it comes to accepting what Allah says and the right things, our hearts will be blind. And we went down last week into all those verses from the Quran, Allah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reminding ourselves how Allah speaks about the hearts are blind and the hearts are locked up. Oh yeah, it's a very interesting thing, the qalb. So again, I don't want to get into that topic. So please, you can get that CD available at the Al-Hikmah Dawa table after Salah. Inshallah. Today in the second khutbah, bi'idhnillah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the second khutbah today, I would like to remind myself and remind you a little more on an expansion or extension from the heart, meaning the whole human body. It's interesting, the human body, how powerful this human body is, how unique this insan and this human being is. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Teen, chapter 95 of the Quran, Verse number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Allah says that he has created human beings in the most beautiful, the most perfect form. In the best form. أَحْسَنَ In the best form. Out of everything else in this universe. The most unique the most superb, the most phenomenal thing that has been created in this world and in the best of form is the human being. That's not just a word. That has great depth. That has great depth. So in the second khutbah today, inshallah, my brothers and sisters, there are many things we can talk about the human being and the human body. Last week we spoke on the heart, alhamdulillah. But it's interesting how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. And how he has created this universe. And how he has created the people around us. And how he has created it very important that as human beings... We must connect. And that's the point I want to get at. Connect. We must connect to other people. Our bodies were designed like that. Do you know the human body? Do you know you could look at someone with your eyes and you can connect with them? And they can get a message? Oh, yeah. You can say a word from the tongue to someone and you can connect 
a link with that person. You can just sit and listen to someone and give that person a good hearing and you connect. And you can sit in a class and not hear and then you disconnect from what the teacher is telling you. A human being, body got some interesting connection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with these connectors from the human body. Because Allah wants us to connect with other people. My brothers and sisters, we live in a very sad time today. A lot of stress, a lot of loneliness, a lot of frustration. But do you know, do you know that if we as human beings would go according to what Allah has created and how Allah has created us to connect to other human beings, that could be the stress reliever, that could be the loneliness reliever, that can prevent us from stress and loneliness. Because Allah has created human beings to connect to each other as a means. In addition, again I said, Bismillah, we spoke last week about the heart connecting to Allah. And then Allah wants us to connect with people. That's why, look at, the, look, look at the beauty of a mother and a child. A child. Do you think a child is being dropped from a tree? A coconut tree? We live a life where it's important for us to connect to human beings, to our brothers and sisters. A lot of us think that because we're wealthy and we got all the doctorate and we got the biggest home and we live in closed communities, we don't need to connect with people. Well, you are fooling yourself. You are going to live in misery. You're going to live in loneliness. You're going to live in stress. You're going to live in frustration with all your gold and all your diamond and all your cars and all your glass homes. You can end up in a lot of frustration. Because Allah has made it happen that when we're to be born, we are delivered. Think about the connection. When a baby, a baby connects to the mother. We are not Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And we are not Eve, Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah has made it happen that as a baby, Allah could have caused us to be, to just appear. He didn't need to have a baby connecting to a mother's womb. To have a connection, this baby has to connect to the mother. This baby is delivered from the mother. This baby, when this baby lives a life, someone takes this baby or this man and puts him or her in the grave. You don't bury yourself. You don't pray your own janazah. Allah has designed this human being that we must always remember to be connected to our brothers and sisters. Don't live this selfish life that we have today going on in the world. It is not Islamic. People boast about I live by myself and I have everything. My business is successful. My wife is pretty. My husband got everything. I have everything. I don't need anybody. Foolishness. Un-Islamic. You couldn't be better than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And he lived with the everybody. Oh yeah. You couldn't be better than him. You couldn't be better than none of the prophets. And they showed us, the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, the prophets and messengers of Allah, they showed us how they lived with the community and the people. Because Allah wanted them to demonstrate that. And Allah has created us in a way that we cannot live by ourselves. Do you know the husband and wife? What does Allah say in Surah Rum? Chapter 30, verse 21. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Allah has created your spouse so you find peace and tranquility. The husband and the wife. The parents. Your children. Oh yeah, it's a connection. You need your children's love. You need your parents' connection. 
You need your siblings, your brothers and sisters. A lot of us today, because we have money and we have education and we have our own homes and our own cars, and our, we feel we don't need our brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, yeah, well, we hold on to the parents again to see what we can still get out of them. But when you get everything, you don't leave your need your brothers and sisters. Some people reach a stage they don't even need their children. Far less for needing the uncles and the aunts and the communities. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Once a man went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have sinned. I've committed a lot of wrong and a lot of sin. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, in addition to praying, making dua, and tawbah, etc. He said, go and do khidmat. Be nice to your mother. Do some khidmat. Care for her. And the man said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my mother has passed. He said, be nice to your mother's sister. Today, how many people connect with your mother's sister? They don't even connect with your mother. They don't even connect with their father. Fathers for their brothers and children. Fathers for their relatives. Because, you know, we don't need. We feel we don't need people. We live this social, un-Islamic life and we boast about it. It is ignorance. It is a sign of jahiliya. When people think like that, that I don't need anybody. Allah has created us that we need people to be around us. Uh -huh. Then the second khutbah, my brothers and sisters. I'd like to touch a little bit on this. Because, you know, yeah, we perform hajj, we fast, we pray our salah, we give our zakah, we feel we everything, we got everything. We don't need anybody. That's not how this deen was designed. Even the presidential candidate needs everybody to vote for them. Mr. Billionaire Trump needs everybody to vote for him. If the, he could have said, I don't need nobody, he at least needs your vote. See how interesting it is? All the money he has, whatever he has. So don't ever think we don't need. And it's not about vote. Just to live a good Muslim life, we need to connect. And Allah has created us with these connectors in the human body. So in this second khutbah, inshallah, my brothers and sisters, I want to remind myself and you a little bit and how important it is to connect, love, be kind, be caring, share with other people. This is what this life and this human mechanism and system is all about that Allah has designed with us, inshallah. You know, it reminds me of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu in which he says on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say to a person, you say, I was hungry, and you didn't give me food. And the person will say, Allah, are you hungry? You, you don't eat, you don't need to eat. How could you be hungry? You are Ghani, you are the wealthiest you are. Allah say, well, not me, but my makhluk, my creation, a human being that I created. You didn't care to give that, feed that person and clothe that person and care for that person. That was my creation. You know, Allah only tries us and tests us to see if we live this selfish life. If we think that we are it all and we can do it all on our own, it doesn't work like that. We, that's only in our mind. And that's why a lot of people end up in their, their loneliness and their stress. Because when we connect with people, when we connect with people and we help and we share and we care and we create that love and relationship with people, it goes a far way for our own success. You know, many a times, many a times, we do good things for people and then we talk about, I do this good thing for that person because of who he is and what he is. You shouldn't be doing things for people of because who he is and what he is. I know that sounds strange, huh? You're probably wondering, why am I saying that? Why are you doing things for somebody because of who he is and what he is? Huh? Does Allah do things for us because of who we are and what we do? Ask yourself that question. 
I get a little goosebump when I say that. Do you think Allah does things for us because of who we are? Do you think, and I want to say this for our worldwide viewers who are looking at Al Hikmat TV live worldwide, do you think God, and for our non Muslim viewers who are looking, do you think God does things for us human beings because of who we are and what we do? No. If Allah was to do things for us because of what we do, we won't get anything. Because we don't even do anything that is really expected. The way we are expected to do our duty to Allah. Uh -huh. Allah do things for us because Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. See the point? Because Allah is the most merciful. Because of Allah's kindness. Because Allah is the merciful. Allah is the most kind. Allah is the most gracious. So Allah does for us out of His kindness, His mercy. Uh -huh. Not because of what we do. What about the kuffar? What about the people who don't believe that God exists? Doesn't He do for them? Well, then He shouldn't be doing for them. You know, people don't believe that God exists. God still gives them money and food and wealth. So if He used to give us based on what we do and what we don't do, we wouldn't be getting anything. It's because of who he is. You know, you see the 99 names on the walls here in Darululu? Those are the 99 attributes of Allah. And if you read them, you'll see one of them, one of the titles called Al-Wudud. Oh yeah, Al-Wudud. You know what Al-Wudud means? The most loving. Because Allah is full of love. Allah is full of love. Allah is full of mercy. So Allah gives us and does for us because He is the most loving and the most merciful. So the point I was getting at a little earlier on, you don't give somebody because of who that person is, because it's your brother, he's, about, he's from your nationality, he's from your tribe, or he's... The, you give because you are a kind person. Give because you're a loving person. Be, give because Allah has given to you. يُنفِقُون, and you give out of that mercy that Allah has given to you. That love that Allah has given to you. You are the loving person who worship the loving Allah, the most gracious Allah, the most merciful Allah. That's how and why we give. If you have to give zakat to a poor person, but he says, No, my brother, he's not Pakistani like me. He doesn't have an American citizenship. He ain't Bengali. He ain't Trinidadian or Guyanese. He not from my nationality. So I won't give him. It's not about that. It's about Allah has given you and you have to give. It's not because of who the person is and what they are. See, a lot of times we do things like that. That we give to people of who they are and what they are and what we expect to get back from them. This is not an election that you vote for someone because you expect to get back from them. This is about pleasing Allah. This is about pleasing Allah. Uh, you do things for God. You do things for Allah. For the pleasure of Allah. Because Allah is most merciful. Allah is most kind. Allah is most loving. Allah is most forgiving. And that's how we do for people. You follow that point? That's an important point. And a lot of people pray today, you know, oh yeah, long beard, pugri. And we pray. But because we have this corruption inside of us, this selfishness inside of us, that we miss a major point in connecting with the community, with the ummah, with families, with relatives, with our brothers and sisters. And by missing that link, we lose a lot. Do you know? How Allah has set up this Islam in such a fantastic way. You see the five pillars of Islam? Iman, Salah, prayer, Zakat, charity, fasting, and Hajj. Look at how this, these are five pillars for us to do to go to paradise. Based on Allah's mercy and Allah's acceptance. But do, you, do you know... Each one of these pillars have connection to human being. When we say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, how do we connect to other people? 
we connect because we are saying there is no God but Allah. So by Allah, one God, then everybody else who believe in that one God makes us one people. Oh yeah, there's a Quranic verse on that. In Surah Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 92. Inna hadhihi ummatukum ummatan wahida wa ana rabbukum fa'budun. Allah says, this ummah, this brotherhood is one brotherhood. And he is the one God that we worship. So we all automatically connect with people because of our faith. When we pray salah, a lot of you could have stayed home and prayed Juma, But do you think you can stay home and pray Juma? You can't. There is no Juma if you pray home alone with your wife. You could pray Nafil Salah. You can probably pray a daily Salah if you want. But look at how the Prophet wasallam, how Allah has designed this deen. That the Prophet wasallam says, when you pray Salah, not fill masjid in the mosque, but build Jama, but with the people. You see it? The connection with the people. You know when you pray, the Prophet wasallam says, Together, keep the line straight, don't leave room for shaitan. What are we doing when we pray salah? Huh? We connecting to each other. We connecting to each other. Uh huh. That's five times salah. And you get more blessings. 27 times more blessings when you pray your salah in Jamaat with the people. Your, sub, your prayer is multiplied 27 times more. You see the connection? Today, a lot of us are so very selfish. We come for the connection and the blessing. We pray the salah. We bust it out. We bust it in. We don't care to tell someone, assalamu alaikum. We don't care who you are, what you are. We are just a bunch of so selfish people. There's a barakat in joining together. We need the Jamaat to pray. You could go and say, well, you know what? I don't need the daily congregation Jamaat. I'll pray on my own. Then you don't get the 27 times blessing. That's hadith, authentic hadith. And do you know, my brothers and sisters, that's daily. On a weekly basis, you come for Juma Salah. So now you pray in a bigger congregation. So you see the congregation? You see the connection? As a Muslim, you now connect to this big Jamaat. So you get more blessings. And do you know Jum'ah Salah? If you study the fiqh and the law of Jum'ah, the bigger the Jum'ah, the bigger the congregation, it's the more blessings you get. That's why I tell some of my people, a lot of people have the time, but they go to the business masjids. You know the business masjid? You know the business masjid? What is the business masjid? Where they give you a two minutes khutbah, so you could go back to your business. Sometimes you don't even get a khutbah. You go in time for prayer. You study the fiqh of Juma. Juma means gathering, congregation. The bigger the congregation is, the more the prayer blessings you get. To study the jurisprudence of Islam. And you go into Masjid, Masjid Al-Aqsa and you get more blessings because there's more people. You go into Masjid Al-Nabawi, you get more blessings, there's more people. You're going by the Kaaba in the Haram and you get more blessings as more people. Oh yeah. You see how the connection with the people is important? It connects to our blessings. Forget about just the give and take. Salah. The third pillar of Islam. Zakat. How does that work? Do you give yourself zakat? My brother said? You don't give yourself zakat. You give your wife zakat? No. Do you give your children zakat? No. Do you give your parents zakat? No. Because you're supposed to take care of your wife and your children and your parents. But you connect with the community by giving charity, the third pillar of Islam, to other people. And that brings blessings for you. You see the connection? You see why it's important as Muslims that we connect with the community? Then why do we want to live this social, selfish life? That brings blessings for us. Mm. You know the fourth pillar of Islam, fasting in the month of Ramadan? Oh my Lord, that's the time even if Muslims don't want to connect, they connect. 
You see them at the thousands praying Taraweeh Salah. You see them in Iftar. You see them at the end of Ramadan and eat Salah. Everybody's trying to connect, to eat together, to pray together. It just brings the Muslim Ummah together. And when you, ready, when you finish fasting in Ramadan, before you pray your Eid, the Prophet says, what you got to do? Give zakatul fit. Sadqatul fit. You connect again with people. You care for people. You share for, with people. It's so important caring, sharing, linking, and connecting with people is in Islam. Uh, but yet a lot of us go to mosque, we go to the masjid, we pray, and we disconnect. Because we're very selfish. We just come just for the prayer. And we forget about the Muslim ummah, the brotherhood, the fraternity, the sisterhood. That's an important thing in Islam. And what about the fifth pillar? Hajj. Allah. That's where you get the biggest congregation of the people, isn't it? The millions of Muslims come together and you connect. You're making tawaf around the Kaaba. Huh? You're going Arafah in the plains of Arafah where all the Muslims are. You're making tawaf around the Kaaba. Doesn't matter who is black. It doesn't matter who is white. It doesn't matter who is Tablighi. It doesn't matter who is Salafi. It doesn't matter who is Hanafi. It doesn't matter who is Tablighi, Shafi, Hanbali, Malaki, or Nomi. You all unite and bring that togetherness together. See the power. But when we're in America, we say, I go into the Salafi Masjid. I go into the Tablighi Masjid. I go into the Bangladeshi Masjid, the Pakistani Masjid. I go to the Arab Masjid. I go. What is wrong with you? Are we mad people? Huh? We connect by nationality? We should be collect connecting by Iman, by faith. Surah Anbiya, the Prophets, chapter 21, verse 92. Allah tells us we are one Ummah. We are one people. And we should worship Him in oneness. Why do we separate masjids and people by nationality, by color, and by language? I have no problem if you go for food, because not everybody could eat biryani. And not everybody could eat Arab food. And not everybody could eat junk food. So you probably go for food. Mashallah, halal. But don't tell me you're going because of your nationality. Then something is wrong with our iman. You see how the five pillars are connected to people? Oh, yeah. As Muslims, connecting and caring and sharing with brothers and sisters is a very important part of this deen and our iman. Anyhow, I was supposed to go to the second khutbah. It's already 2.30. Um, Let me just go to the second khutbah and conclude, inshallah. I will continue with the topic, based on the line, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah or paradise without reckoning, inshallah. Wa akhri da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi na'hmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Once more, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be here to perform the Salat al Jummah, the Friday congregational prayer. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een and upon his family members and companions. And I again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness, and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. 
And I want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to continue with the second khutbah. I ask, I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. So alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, as we were saying in the first khutbah, and for those of you who came late, I, I can't really go back, you'll have to get that from the al Hikmah Dawah table, the CD, the khutbah is free. Or you can look at it on al Hikmah TV or al Hikmah YouTube sometime later on. But the, the human body, Allah has created us with a certain mechanism that we must connect to other people. He has designed us like that, connecting to our mother, our parents, our children, our brothers and sisters, our community. You know, once upon a time, that used to exist. Nowadays, it's unfortunate. You know that. I don't need to share that with you. You go to the airport, you go in the restaurant, everywhere you go, everybody's connected. Do you know what they're connected to? Everybody's connected. Yeah, they're connected. T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, we're all connected. Which is good. I love technology. And I like technology. Technology, you know, it, it, it helps you a lot to understand Islam. So we're all connected here, but we're disconnected from the wife next to us. You're disconnected to your brother and sister around you. You're disconnected with the people. Nothing is wrong. Allah has blessed us. Email, text, WhatsApp. MashaAllah. It's a good opportunity to connect. But that does not mean that you must disconnect from the people around you. Use the connection to connect. But unfortunately, a lot of us connect by the phone, but we are disconnected from the heart. You're not connected with your brothers and sisters. You're not connected with love to your family members. You're not connected with your roommates, your classmates, your neighbors. Do you know those were the days when a person will give their neighbor a ride to the hospital, to the airport, to school, to their job. People will give someone's child a ride to school. Nowadays, you are scared to even ask your own brother for a ride. Oh, but we connected, eh? iPhone. But you're disconnected from him. Oh, that's why you're afraid to ask because you know that connection does not exist. So we, you know, technology is a beautiful thing. I like the, the term connect. Every time, you know, what I'm trying to tell you and myself here, we should all initiate and activate, activate the Bluetooth in our heart. Huh? You know, your phone could connect to your car, eh? but what do you need? Bluetooth. Yeah, get this Bluetooth connected. And then it works. Otherwise, you could sit, you could have your phone and put it on, the, on, on your car, on your radio, P, it doesn't connect. You could be sitting next to somebody in a car or in a plane, touching the person, but you're not connected. The Bluetooth, you know. Connect this Bluetooth from your heart. And what is the Bluetooth of the heart? Iman. Have that true faith in Allah. Connect to Allah. And let your heart be connected to Allah. And do what Allah says. Allah says to connect with the Ummah. Inna hadhihi ummatakum ummatan wahida. Wa ana rabbukum This is one Ummah. We are one people. We connected by Iman and faith to Allah. We pray Salah together. The Jamaat. The connection. Allah has designed this thing like that. Don't wait for a disaster. Unfortunately, what happens a lot of times when someone dies, then people connect. You know what happens there? It's the dead bringing the living to life. You don't meet people until somebody die. You don't care to meet people until somebody die. Uh, no, as Muslims, you don't wait for someone to die. 
We should make that relationship. Unfortunately, that's a problem happening today. And it's happening with siblings, offsprings, family ties, far less for the neighbors and the jamaat and the community and the society. It's a sad time. It's a serious time. And Islam teaches us this. Do you know if you go into Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse, one, verse 64, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم. Allah commands us in the Quran in chapter three, verse sixty-four, to call the Jews and the Christians, call them, Allah tell them to call, call them together, and discuss areas سواء بيننا وبينكم. Areas of commonalities that exist amongst us. Allahu Akbar. Here Allah is telling us to call Jews and Christians. Other faiths. To come together. And if you forget it, take the CD. From al Madawa table. We are commanded to call Jews and Christians to come together. People of the book, ehl kitab And discuss areas of commonalities. So if we are commanded in the Quran chapter 3 verse 64 to do that, my brothers and sisters, then why can't you call your brothers and sisters, your loving brothers and sisters, your community, your siblings, your co-workers, your classmates, your people together and unite on areas of commonalities? Huh? Why do we have to wait for someone to die? Why can't we unite together with the people in our family? You know, you say, I don't like this person because of that. I don't like that person because of that. I don't like that person because of that. You know what happened? You become alone. You become lonely. When you find faults, you know, there's a famous saying, if you find a fault in every friend, then what happens, Brother Irfan? You become friendless. No friends at all. Don't look for the faults in people. Don't follow the faults of people. Look for the good in them. Connect with them in the areas of commonalities where you can communicate, where you have good understanding, where you have good relationship. Don't disconnect from people. Technology shows us today how you connect. You cannot be a successful businessman if you don't connect. You do marketing, don't you, Brother Azad? Marketing? You have a salesman doing advertising and a marketing? You've got to connect your business to the people. Anything you do, you've got to connect. We cannot live this disconnected life. That's how Allah has us and designed this life for us. You know, so I want to conclude the khutbah today because I know we have a guest with us again. We have, and this is very interesting and this is very nice. We have the commissioner of Pembroke Pines here and he shared with me a few days ago that as the commissioner of Pembroke Pines, he did something very unique for the Muslims and he will tell you the details of it in which he has got the Pembroke Pine City to dedicate a Muslim Heritage Month for the Muslims. And that's very good of him and he's present with us. And I want to also share and say a very special thanks to him also because he has also always been very helpful and supportive of Darul Uloom, of Al Hikmat, and of all the kind of community work we do. So it's always a pleasure to have him with us. And that's important, you connect, right? Because we're connecting with the city. The city officials connect with us. That's a connection. You don't only make connection when there's a problem. Then that's not a connection. That's a matlabi. You're seeking only what you want. You're selfish. When you want something, that's when you are going to ask somebody. You're not connected. Keep connected. And the things will flow. The relationship, the bond as Muslims. So... I gotta share this with you because you know there is something as I say this about connect and I'm gonna really stop after this and I gotta share this with you because it still sings in my mind. Because I know there are a lot of people who come a little late to get the salah just around this time, inshallah. So if you finish a little too early, then they miss their salah. So I don't wanna create that problem too. I wanna share something with you and how connecting, inshallah. How sharing and caring is important. Last week, Saturday, a little real story. Someone texted me on WhatsApp 
And I just got the text, and I was like, all right, who is this? I don't know this number. And the person said, and I, I don't know if he's looking at this on television right now because it's broadcasted worldwide. He says, I am Dave. I said, which Dave? He said, I'm the son of one of your students. I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 41 years old. So it's a brother, 41 years. Texted me Saturday. He said, someone gave me your number, and I've always wanted to get your number. And I want to share something with you. He said, my father, before he died, now his father was older than me, maybe 10, 15 years older than me, when I went back to Trinidad and started giving dawah and spreading the deen, the ibn Allah. He said, my father, before he died, in his last days, he was just only speaking about you and how you never gave up with him. See the connect? He said, you always kept on coming and visiting him, visiting him. Now, this was a guy, strange guy. This man, he did it all. You know what you call a little gringo? He did it all. Womanized, drink, drunk, the whole nine yards. So when I qualified, Alhamdulillah, and went back to Trinidad, I used to go by his home very regular for a couple of years to try to get him to come to the mosque, to try to get him to come in Islam. He said, listen, you Muslims never did nothing for me. You see my house? You see my car? You see all this that I have? No Muslim gave that to me. I work for that. And he was very arrogant. He was this kind of guy. He was known in town. He would beat anybody. He would fight with anybody. He would curse anybody. And he used to run us, literally. I've been honest with you. I never went alone because I was scared he'd probably insult me even worse than chasing me away. But you know what? Now his son is telling me last week on text, found my number that somebody gave to him. He said, my father, last days before he died, he kept on saying that Sheikh Shafiat never gave up on me. He came, he came, he came, he came. And all I got rid of him and all I got rid of him, he never gave up on me. And those were his days. Those were his last days. And you know what happened to that brother? Oh, Allah, you won't believe. He finally one day came to the masjid. You know, Brother Abdul Salam, that's why tabligh, you go to people, don't give up. Continue going. Doesn't matter what they do. It was a guy who used to drink. Everything haram you think about, he was in that business. All right? One day he came to the masjid, and that was it. No turning back. The brother finally started praying salah. He started coming for classes. He started reading Quran, learning to read Quran. This is a big man, eh? He was about 40 years old then. Now I'm speaking to his 40 years son to one week ago on text. This brother started, this boy, this man father started learning Quran. He learned and he practiced and he prayed until he became Brother Azad, the Imam of the Masjid. Oh yeah, I'm not just telling you a brother who came into Islam and just learned. He became the Imam of the Masjid. In the class that I had, he superseded everybody. Yeah, his name is Brother Rajali, and I will share it publicly. And not only did he become the Imam of the Masjid, do you know what he did? Allahu Akbar. As he got more into the deen, the masjid that it had there, that mosque, he rebuilt that mosque alone. You don't find many doctors and lawyers and millionaires in America doing that. Praying Salah, reading Quran, 10 Hajj and 40 Hajj. Here's a man who came from woman, wine, and everything else put together. He built a masjid alone. If you want, you could go to Trinidad and Gasparillo and see it. It's still there. Big masjid. His own money. His own time. His own effort. If anyone gave anything, he said, Alhamdulillah. But he did it himself with all his money and all his time and all his efforts. He wouldn't know about learning to just be an imam, to talk and lecture for show business. Allah blessed him. That his children ended up falling into that path. And today his son texted me last week to say, and you know, whenever I listen to your audios, those were the days we did audio. He said, when I listen to your Quranic recitation, I only cry. And you know that had me crying last week. I became very emotional. He's telling me, I still have your audios and your recitation. He said, I cry because whenever I hear your voice and your recitation, I remember my father. And I remember how my father will always tell me that he would not have come in into this deen. It is by the hidayah of Allah. 
but because I kept on connecting with him. And I'm saying this because of the connection, Brother Azad. I kept on connecting. I never gave up. Even though he chased me. Many times he chased me. Insulted me and abused me. And his son is telling me. It took 40 years after his son is telling me that. His son was a little boy, five, six years. So he has no clue what happened with me and his dad. He said, now when I read, when I, read, when I hear you read Quran, I cry because I hear my father. Because he used to read like you. And last thing I want to share with you is a long, interesting story. But he also told me, he said, please, whenever you visit Trinidad, I want you to visit my two little sons. Please, could you do me that favor? And I asked him why. You know why? He said, my father never had the opportunity to see my children. And at least if you see my children, I'll feel like my father has seen my children. You see, this connection, the Quran, the deen has brought a family connected after 40 years I'm hearing this so brothers and sisters you do good for somebody you help someone in the deen whatever it takes however that can take 40 years after you will see the results and Allah will give you the blessings and the good in this world and the good in the hereafter inshallah ya Allah ya rahim rahim wa ghafur rahim alhamdulillah alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa la aqidatil al muttaqeen Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Ya Allah, ya rahman rahimin, ya kafur rahim. O Allah, we thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, ya Allah. We ask thee, Allah, to send your peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask thee, Allah, to guide us all on the right path and give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. And give us that iman and that faith and that courage that we could connect with our brothers and sisters and in the ummah and the community, ya Allah. And forgive us again for our shortcomings. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina ala banyar. Inna Allahu malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina amalana muhammad wa ala ali muhammadin bi adadi man sallu wa sallam. اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكتك المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يعمل بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى